everybody and welcome to another Linux for Programmers tutorial video. In this video, we're going to be covering creating a Flask application and hosting it on our Linux machine. And we're not going to be talking a ton about coding or Python or anything like that. I just want to show you how we can take a really basic web app. And when I say basic, it's literally going to be 10 lines of code and host it on the public IP address of our virtual private server. That way we can actually view this website from any device. And then in the next video in this series, we will connect a domain to that web server. So you'll actually be able to send requests to not just an IP address, but the domain name of the server. Now, this is super useful to know how to do. A lot of times myself, I want to show people my applications or something along those lines. And so I just host it on a public IP address for an hour or two, give people that IP address, and then they can go and view my application without having to download and set up the code and do everything on their own machine. So now let's dive into this and let's set up this server such that we can host a web app on it. So one last thing before we get into all of that, I actually wrote a little bit of a guide for this video. So in case you get lost or you just want to see all of the commands, or for example, there's some uh, snippets of code that we're going to have to copy in here. You can go to the link in the description and click on this GitHub link here. And I have for example, the init file that we're going to use later on that has our website code inside of it. I also have another file here for our NGINX settings uh, that we're going to have to use later on. So if you ever see me copying anything into the window, well, you can find all of it from right here. Again, link in the description. Now, this guide is really just a summary of a more detailed guide that's provided by Linode. So you're welcome to follow along with this one as well. Uh, this one is just more detail. I just wanted to write kind of a summarized version so you didn't have to read through all of that if you just wanted to follow along with this video. So anyways, those are both in the description, but let's get started. The first thing that we need to do here is actually install Python on our Linux machine. Now you should already have Python installed. But we want to make sure that we install Python three. So I'm signed in as the root user, but if you were not signed in as the root user, you're going to have to prefix pretty much all of these commands with sudo and you are going to have to be a sudo user or in the sudoers group. So let's get started. We're going to install Python. I'm going to say apt hyphen get install and then Python three. Now make sure you have this three here. We don't want to install Python two. We want Python three. So I'm going to do that. And you can see it says zero upgraded, zero newly installed because Python three was already installed. After that, we're going to install pip. Now to install pip, we're going to say apt hyphen get, and we need the P here, apt hyphen get install Python three hyphen pip. Now this should already be installed as well. Actually, no, it's not. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. But the reason we need to do that is because pip is our package manager for Python, and we're going to use it to install flask, which is a dependency for our web application. All right, so I'm back. That took a minute to install. But now that we have this, we have Python installed and we have pip. Now notice we have pip three and Python three that is different from Python two. So just make sure you have Python three, because if you have Python two, you're probably going to run into some errors. So now that we have Python installed, what I want to do is actually create my Flask application. So right now I'm in my user's home folder. You just want to go inside of the home folder for your user and you want to make a folder for your Flask application. So I'm going to say mkdir and then Flask underscore project. Now you can call this whatever you want, but make sure you remember what you call this folder because we're going to have to use this folder name later on. So I'm going to make directory Flask project. I'm now going to get into this directory. So CD and then flask underscore project. And now what I need to do is actually create my Python file, which is going to kind of store my website. It's what my website is really going to be. So I'm going to say nano and then I'm going to make a file. We're going to call it underscore underscore. So two underscores, a knit and then another two underscores and then dot pi. Now it's very important that you call the file this. Uh, you'll see why in a second, but just call your file a knit dot pi. So once we make init.py and this is inside of our Flask project folder, what we need to do is write our Flask code to render the website. Now I have a bunch of tutorials myself on Flask, so I'm not going to go through all of what this means, but go to the GitHub and just take this code right here and copy it into this file. So if you're on your local machine, so not on the remote machine, you can copy the text to your clipboard. You can do this just by going to GitHub and just opening init.py. So copy all of the text here. You're welcome to change whatever you want, but this is just really basic. It's just for example purposes. And then to paste it inside of here, you're going to right click with your mouse. So that is how you paste in Linux, at least from your local machine to this Linux server. You right click on your mouse when you have something copied to your clipboard. So now I've copied this in 
And what I'm going to do is save this file and write it out. So that's all I need. That's inside of my init.py file. And actually, I'm just going to open this one more time. It's very important that your app name, so your instance of Flask is called app. Now, I don't imagine many of you are going to be changing this, but just make sure that you don't change this. And oh, sorry, one thing, there's a small mistake here. I will fix this in the GitHub, but this should say config. So app.config secret key is equal to secret key one, two, three. I'm glad I caught that, but don't worry, that will be in the GitHub so you won't have to worry about fixing this. Anyways, I'm going to save and I'm going to exit. All right, so now that I've created this file, what I need to do is install nginx. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to run our Python web server using something called Junicorn. Now, I'll discuss that when we get to that step. But what nginx is going to do is it's going to forward requests that are coming to the public IP address of this server to our local web server. So this is kind of a gateway that's redirecting requests sent to the server to our Flask application. You don't have to fully understand how this works, but it's just redirecting requests to the Flask application. And yeah, it just makes things much simpler to do. So we're going to say apt and then install and then nginx. Now, again, if you're not a root user, you're probably going to need to use sudo when you do this. So I'm going to install nginx. I'm going to say yes, and I'll wait for this to install and I'll be right back. So we now have nginx installed. And just to clarify here, this software is actually a web server. So it's going to be running on our machine and it's going to handle requests and then serve them or redirect them to our Python web server. So what we need to do is set up a configuration file here for nginx to tell it where we should put these requests, where we should redirect them to. So we're going to type the following line, nano and then slash etc slash nginx slash sites hyphen enabled like that and then slash flask underscore project. Now, if you named your directory for your flask application something different, you're going to change the name of this here so it's not flask project. But this is what we need to type. Again, it is nano etc slash nginx slash sites hyphen enabled slash flask project. So inside of here, what we're going to do is place our configuration file where we're going to write a configuration file. So I'm going to copy something in here. And in fact, I'll show you where I'm getting it from. If you go to the GitHub and you go to nginx settings or you just look at this right here, either one is fine. Then you can take the code that's written here and just simply copy this into this file. Now, the only thing we need to change here is where it says public server IP. So what we're doing is we're saying we're listening on port 80, which is the default port for HTTP. And then our server name is, well, the IP address of this actual Linux machine. Now, notice that what's happening here is we're saying, OK, this nginx web server is going to listen on port 80. It's going to have this server name, and then we're going to redirect it using something called a proxy to our local host. And our local host is going to be running the Flask web server. So that's kind of how this works. But what you need to do is find the public IP address of your Linode or of your Linux server. You should be able to find this. I talked about this in the earlier videos in this series, but you can go to your Linode dashboard and find it and just replace this line right here. So I'm going to replace this with my server IP address, make sure the syntax of this file stays correct, then going to save. That's the only line you need to change and exit out. So now that we've created this nginx configuration file, we need to actually remove the default configuration file or unlink the default configuration file and replace it with this one. So what we're going to say is unlink and then slash etc slash nginx slash sites hyphen enabled just like before and then slash and this time we are going to type default to unlink the default configuration file. So once I do that, I'm going to press enter and then it should unlink that file. Then we need to reload nginx and it will look for the new configuration file and then we should pretty much be good to go. So I'm going to say nginx hyphen s reload and don't worry too much about these commands if you don't understand them. The point of this is just to show you how we can you know, host the server and you can always come back and look at all the syntax later on. You don't need to memorize this. So nginx hyphen s reload is going to reload nginx, find the new configuration file and then use that one. So we're going to press enter. It reloads that you won't have any output from this command. All right. So I've just cleared the screen to give us a bit more room here, make it easier to see. But we just finished setting up and installing nginx. What we're going to do now is install a piece of software called Junicorn. Now, Junicorn is a Python web server gateway interface. 
I'm not going to talk about exactly what that means, but what it allows us to do is forward the request from our NGINX web server to our Flask application. And specifically, it's going to run our Flask application. And what it will actually do is allow our Flask application to run on multiple processing cores. So to put it quite simply and definitely not a completely accurate explanation, this is just going to make our Python web server feel more responsive. You can look up Junicorn in your free time if you want to see exactly how it works and what it does, uh, but I'm not a networking expert, so I'm not going to attempt to explain everything. Anyways, to install Junicorn, what we need to do is type apt get install and then Junicorn like that. So we're going to install Junicorn. And once this is installed, I will be right back. So now Junicorn is installed and there's actually only one more thing we need to do to run this web server. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to the parent directory of where your Flask web app is stored. So mine is in Flask project. So the parent directory of Flask project is my home directory or the root directory. So I'm going to CD out of this. So CD dot dot. So now what I'm going to say is Junicorn and then hyphen W, which stands for workers, then three, then the name of the folder that's storing my Flask application. So Flask underscore project then a colon and then app. Now, the reason we're doing app is because that's the name of our Flask instance inside of our init.py file. And the reason we're doing Flask project is because, well, that's the directory or the folder that is storing our Flask application. Now, this hyphen W, as I said, stands for workers. Now, you can kind of think of workers as different processes. So if you have three workers, you have three separate processes that are running this web application. So the better the server that you're on, the more workers that you're able to have. And I believe the general rule of thumb is you want to figure out how many CPU cores you have and multiply that by two and then add one to it to figure out how many workers you should have. So if we were on a dual core processor, then we would have five workers because two times two is four plus one is five. Now I'm on a single core processor, so I have one times two, which is two plus one, which is three workers. Now that is what was said in the Linode guide. Again, I'm not an expert on this. I'm just telling you what I've heard about this. So anyways, now that we have this line written, Junicorn hyphen W3 Flask project colon app. We're going to run this. And now after we run this, we see that we get an error. Now this error is something that I probably should have mentioned at the very beginning of the video. We need to install Flask. So the whole reason we installed pip3 was so that we could install Flask and I totally forgot to do that. So I'm going to say pip3 install Flask, which is a Python module that we need. So once we do that, now once we rerun this command, so junicorn hyphen w3 Flask project colon app, this should work without any issues. Let's see. And we're running this and it looks like this is indeed working. So now what we can do if we want to test if this web application is working is we can go to our web browser and we can type in the public IP address of our Linux server. This is mine. And when I do that, notice it brings me to my Flask application. Now in my Flask application, all I'm doing is just returning some JSON message. So it says message and then testing. But this is our application. This is working. We can now reach this from the server IP address. So obviously you would probably want to have a proper website here, not just something that returns something silly like this, but that is how you host a Flask web server on uh, a Linux machine. So now anyone in the world can access our website from this IP address. So there is more that you would likely want to do if you were hosting a production website. But the point of this was just to show you how you could spin something up quickly and get a Flask web app running on your Linux machine. Now, in the next video, we're going to connect a domain to this, and I'll talk about this a bit more in depth, but that was this video. So if you enjoyed, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel, and I will see you in another YouTube video.